There was an article published in April of 2024 stating gamers mostly played older games like GTA 5 and Fortnite in 2023, called the Golden Oldies. Crazy to see that these games are considered old now, but what's not being tracked is how many of these gamers are playing single player titles with mods, right? Let's be real here. I'm not a dev, I'm not a programmer, I'm just somebody who really loves video games and there's one side I've never explored, mods. Thanks to my Steam Deck, I've been playing Fallout London for about three hours and I am absolutely blown away. Fallout London being created on the foundation of Fallout 4 which was released in 2016. Yeah, there are technical issues, but this mod is easily one of the best pieces of content that I've played this year. And it's free. Look, I'm not here to spoil Fallout London or glaze it too much. This community is parallel to everything that goes on in the video game industry. That includes creative, business, the state of the game itself. Modders can't create these crazy mods without the game itself being polished. I do feel the need to highlight this community because I am so new to it and the levels of content and the accessibility for us gamers, us consumers. It's insane to me that this has been around since the early days of PC gaming. That's how we got games like Counter-Strike. That's how we got games like Dota. And games like Skyrim that essentially feel like a new title in and of itself. The modding community, uh, let's put it real, the modding guilds will be the one group that pushes the gaming industry forward. The modding community has enhanced the longevity of our favorite games, quality of life updates, crazy fan projects that are the size of full priced AAA games. The capability and open access to mods for us gamers, it's, it's actually crazy. Man. I mean, how else am I going to play Paper Mario on 60 frames per second, right? I've never been one to dive into mods because I do feel like the vanilla experience is always worth trying out. And to be honest, downloading these kind of files sketch me the fuck out. However, after purchasing a Steam Deck and diving into that world of PC gaming, mods including content updates for games that no longer have planned content, the volume of creativity, the volume of enhancements that come with the accessibility for modders to create their own environments with new levels, missions, even X-Packs. You know what I mean? These community-driven improvements are an insane level of commitment, capability, of course. But you got to remember that these are all free. With these bug fixes, patches, anything that improves some of our favorite titles, one of the things that we gamers, us consumers, gotta remember is that these modders are doing this on their own time. And look, I'm not here to just talk about quality of life mods and uh, big DLC mods like Fallout London. I'm gonna throw ROM hacks into this conversation as well. Let me know if you think otherwise, because it does get a little blurred here. But I'm more talking in the sense where you take the foundation of a game and you have the ability to create your own world with that foundation that is available to you with the announcement of the halo combat evolved demake for the game boy color it just light bulbed my brain like who else is doing this what other games have this kind of fan projects and lo and behold pokemon pokemon the world that i haven't stepped into in so long has an entire library of rom hacks which is essentially modified versions of certain pokemon titles one of the rom hacks that i thought was worth highlighting is pokemon sword and shield the gba version i'm gonna keep it a buck i hated pokemon sword and shield man this was my first uh, like trip back into this world after playing fire red years ago did not like this game then i discovered the pokemon sword and shield gba version it could be because I'm used to the 2D style, but this experiment to make a GBA version game of a Nintendo Switch, a modern title, you would think that this would erase the feel, the aesthetic, 
the the sense of exploration you receive when you play a game like Pokemon. I can safely say that the team that designed this GBA D-Make was able to preserve the aesthetic design of the 3D world. The colors, the feel, the openness of having Pokemon all around you. The heart of the game is still the same. However, the entire design is completely different, which gives you a different experience. Modding, and in this case, ROM hacks, it's really encouraging these experimental designs, which is what we've been missing in our industry for so long. Us gamers who love video games as a hobby, or it's your main form of relaxation, or it's your way of tapping into the world. We have been receiving these very recycled versions of modern games, and let's be real, it's, it's hit its peak. Finding something that is so experimental, it brings you a new feel and a new experience, all the while still keeping the soul of the game intact. It's incredible. And if there's one thing that I can say about modding and modders in general, the community can be very helpful, <laughs> but it can also be very toxic. That's because there is a very high level of engagement and loyalty when it comes to uh, the modding community that I've learned. Especially trying to get Fallout London running, people are quite literally sharing data, sharing information so that all of us as gamers and consumers can find the correct way to get this ridiculously insane fan project to run and play well enough so that we give them their flowers essentially experience the tiles in itself modding ultimately benefits not just the community but the studio that actually developed the game and you might be thinking how how does that work it actually builds a stronger community by allowing this level of access let's think about forums social media interactions collaborative projects essentially studio acknowledgement of the fact that there are modders here helping and improving the game itself that kind of collaboration is very rare, right? And not just that, now that you have people who play this game contributing to the ecosystem of the life cycle, it's increasing player investment, personalization of the game experience, and it gives you a sense of ownership and contribution to the title itself. Hey, like I, I didn't create this, but there's a mod here that'll help you get uh, unlocked frames for so-and-so title. This kind of shared data it's very rare to see in this day and age especially with all the shit that's going on and having that kind of communication it'll essentially benefit the business as a whole right the economic impact definitely seen as a negative but if i was on the studio side i would say yo these mods that people are using to play our games yeah it's great that they're playing them forever but it's not coming from us 100 percent what every studio executive is thinking when it comes to these mods yeah, gamers are playing old games, but we're playing it with fresh content. And we all know studios are already trying to capitalize on mods from the creators, right? We talked about this, the acknowledgement that comes with working on a title for so long and then having the actual studio or developers who created the game are like, yo, this is dope. Give the credit where it's earned because for a lot of these modders, there is a potential pathway to a actual career in game development professional opportunities that come by showcasing your talent and skills of course it's not all sunshine and rainbows intellectual property issues copyright infringement concerns legal battles and licensing that comes with music voice actors all of this nonsense that goes into developing a game I understand that there is a level of quality control that is needed with mods. Right, don't get me wrong, I think CJ and Sekiro is awesome, <laughs> but it can get a little crazy, right? There can always be that chance that there's a bad apple in the neighborhood that fucks it all up for the rest of us, you know what I mean? I believe modding, the modding community, is the current present of the gaming industry. What the future could be, it's very hit or miss. Who knows how that business side is going to end up with these AAA developers releasing remakes and remasters left and right, where we're receiving fresh content comes from this community. Which is why I believe gamers are playing these old games. Especially if you have a PC, games that we love, right? We have played through and through again and again. 
So when we receive news that these games that we loved playing have a fresh piece of content that is available for free, why wouldn't we go back into our old titles? Why wouldn't we dive back into this? You know what I mean? Final thoughts, definitely support the modding communities out there. Uh, if there's any other support or links that you can provide, definitely feel free to drop those in the comments because I am looking to dive into this side of gaming, this side of PC gaming, like heavy. I feel like I've just been missing out on it for so long. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think about the modding community. Are you a fan of mods? Do you think it kind of hinders the IP itself? I love to talk about this in the comments. It's civil, in a civil manner. That DIY nature of it just makes it a lot of fun, too, you know? So yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you next week. Alright, peace.